I know, wait a minute, 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 okay? I know that a lot of y'all just looked at that title, clicked on this video, and then immediately went to the comment section and started typing up a storm without listening to a single word of what I have to say. And I understand how you feel, but just, just let me explain first, all right? What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Little Sussex Corey, the one never knows best, and today I want to bring you guys a bit of a Dragon Ball Fighters discussion video. I'm flying solo here today, but I had something that I've been thinking about a lot lately, and something I kind of want to get off my chest, especially uh, in light of the recent announcements of a Dragon Ball Fighters balance patch coming to the game. Me saying the name, it was a bit redundant, but regardless, a balance patch coming to the game, and obviously people have a lot of very strong opinions on Lab Coat 21, but what if I told you that she actually saved the game? Now, no matter what I say in this video, a lot of you guys will not be convinced, you will not agree with me, and that is perfectly fine. And if you disagree with anything I say in this video or from my standpoint or my point of view, feel free to drop in the comments down below as I go through and discuss kind of what's on my mind and what I'm thinking. And then, you know, if, you know I, I would love to engage with you guys down below. With that being said, uh, let's take a look over at the Dragon Ball Fighters roster and talk a little bit about what it is that I'm talking about. So, right now in DBFZ, we have a pretty healthy pool of characters. I think we're at about 44 right now, if I remember correct off the top of my head, uh, including all the DLC. And honestly, a lot of these characters are pretty strong right now. You could honestly make the debate or you could honestly make the argument that Dragon Ball Fighters right now is the most balanced that it has ever been and is the most well-rounded it has ever been. Now, I know that some of you might at first think, mm, and nah, that's capped, the fusion of the lab coat are, are, are way too broken, they need to die, da 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 da. And I trust me, I, I understand how you feel. As much as I love lab coat, I, I share everyone's disdain for the fusions. The point is, we have a lot of characters and we have a lot of very strong characters. Now, I think the majority of us would probably unanimously agree, for the most part at least, uh, that the top four characters in the game are Blue Gogeta, Vegito, Lab Coat, and Red Gogeta. Now, there are some other characters in here who I believe have a case to where they could be number one, and there are some other contenders for number one as well, but I think that's a good thing, and the fact that that even exists uh, just only further proves the point that there are a lot of really strong characters in the game right now and a decent bit of balance. Um, actually, if you watched the, the Dragon Ball Fighters roundtable, basically, that I hosted on stream a few days ago, uh, then you know that we think a lot of characters in the game are really good right now, and there's a lot of characters who are in that contention spot uh, for basically fifth best in the game. When you get to number five, it's like, well, I don't know, Blue Goku's up there, Android 17 is up there, Android 18 is up there, uh, Zamasu's up there, Hit is up there, Janemba's definitely up there, right? Base Vegeta and so on and so forth. There are a few characters who are arguably uh, fifth best, uh, or a couple characters who you might even say are the best, depending on certain circumstances. Right? So I think this is very important to keep in mind. Now, before I get into, I guess, kind of my defense of this character, I don't necessarily want to look at it as me defending her per se, even though I know obviously I have my own bias and a lot of you guys are going to point that out and say, you know, you're just biased, you like the character, da da da, 21 apologists, etc, etc, she's got to die. But I get it, Torch's pitchforks, it is what it is, okay? But she is public enemy number one for a lot of people. I've seen a very large amount of people with the very strong opinion that she needs to be nerfed harder than anyone else. And I understand why you guys feel that way. Her introduction to this game was very akin to the likes of Leroy Smith and Tekken 8, where we had six players in top eight running Leroy. Obviously, that's not good for the game, that's not good for the community, that's not good for tournaments, that's not good for competitive play, etc., etc. I fully understand that. And was she overtuned? Was she too strong when she released into this game? She was. Even though I wasn't certain at the time whether or not she was the most broken character in Dragon Ball Fighters, it's very easy to say that she was the strongest character in the game at the time and had tools that we had never seen before, like her debuff super, which also buffs her and, and all the other properties that that move had on it. And it still exists, but she's been toned down a decent amount in my opinion, but a lot of people want to see her turn, toned down uh, way more. However, I don't think a lot of people realize what I'm about to say, and that is the fact that Android 21, Lab Coat specifically, uh, enables way more character diversity and variety than we would have if the game was exactly the same, but without her on the roster. Now again, I know that's gonna get a couple of knee-jerk reactions. How does that make any sense? Everyone's playing lab coat. How is she encouraging character diversity? Well, I think this is important, first of all, to even talk about because I feel like other than like balance or like tier list or strength of characters, the other topic people are always talking about, sometimes complaining about the most online, whether it be in rank matches, player matches, or tournament play, is character variety and diversity. So I feel like obviously a lot of people, myself included, feel strongly about this. I feel less strong about it as I did in the past, um, but I know that is a very common thing that a lot of people, especially at the casual level, care a lot about. And if you really think about it, let's take a second to look back on what Dragon Ball Fighters was like right before Lab Coat released. Around this time, most people would probably say that Yasha was the best player in the world, beating almost every single player. Uh, and he was doing that with the team of Gogeta, Vegito and Android 17. Now there were some events that he wasn't winning in that and that he did lose and there were some some other competitors out there but uh, you know not too long before Live Coat released I think a lot of people were saying that Yansha was the best player in the game this is the strongest team in the game. 
Now, as is the case uh, throughout not only this game's lifespan, but other games' lifespan, a lot of people are going to end up copying the best player or what is perceived to be as the strongest team. So we saw more and more players beginning to pick up this team, whether it be in competitive play, uh, or online or offline, right? I believe Jazz Rap was playing this team and he won, uh, was it Frosty? I want to say, I want to say it was Frosty Faustings, right? Uh, this was a team that won Frosty. Uh, we saw other players like Hikari come onto the scene and then start also dominating online with this team. There were a lot of players. We started seeing this team more and more. And I obviously, and I'm sure you as well, came across this team more and more online. You also had the release of Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, which was encouraging even more fusion teams. And basically I'm bringing all this up to say that before Lab Coat release, we were basically seeing a, a, a very strong lack of diversity and more and more people pick up these double fusion teams. Now, I'm not oblivious to the fact that at this point in the game's lifespan, a lot of people are also playing this team. I say a lot, I honestly don't think it's that many. I mean, obviously Fenrich just won the Dragon Ball Fighters World Tour Finals playing this exact team. Goichi was also playing this team, not in the World Finals, Goichi wasn't there, but Goichi has played this team when he's come back to the game recently. Uh, although he's lapping a bunch of different stuff right now if you've been watching history and really interesting. But uh, yeah, so is Femmich the best player in the world right now? Arguable. I think a lot of people would still say it's Wawa, even though Wawa's kind of been MIA from the last several like major events. Uh, but even if you're not saying Wawa, I don't think a lot of people would be too quick to crown Femmich as the king, despite being the World Tour champion. But if you want to say he's the best and that this is the best team, I don't really have much of an argument there. The argument that I do want to make is the fact that because of the existence of Lab Coat 21, she saved us from what would have been the pure fusion meta i think right now most of us would agree that the meta of the game revolves around playing the fusions and lab coat however even though there are a, a select few people who are playing double fusions and lab coat what you see more often than not is people playing either double fusions or lab coat but with two other very strong characters that they actually enjoy so remember what i was saying earlier about there actually being a lot of very powerful characters in this game right now and that's why you can have a player like shanks who doesn't play any of the top four he plays base vegeta cell and janemba and all these characters are very strong especially janemba who i think is another one of those characters in conversation for that top five that's why you can see a player like him play a team like that and still do well at the highest level because the game actually has a lot of really good characters in it right now characters like krillin who you know are strong but not top tier characters like blue goku who i think is really strong i think he's one of those ones in that not top five conversation but obviously not at the level of the top four characters like videl like when you look at mizi who plays gogeta i mean um well sometimes plays blue gogeta but plays like lab coat with videl and baby or something like that right or a character like i said like baby or like janemba right you see players like zane who plays uh what is it zamasu uh with beerus and lab coat you see a player like wade who plays a uh, hit with uh or i guess he plays 21 point if i remember correct 21 with hit and Janemba. There's all these other characters that are now able to be played and all these different team compositions that are able to be played because of the strength of Lab Coat 21 with her just being one character as opposed to two characters in Gogeta and Vegeta who synergize so well and then you basically just slap on whoever else you want whether that be 17 or a lot of people who are playing this team, right? And I believe, and maybe you played Red Gogeta on point here, but I, I truly believe that if it wasn't for Lab Coat, the majority of people playing this game, especially at the competitive level, would be playing one of two teams and that would be these two teams right here. This is what would run the entirety of online and offline, whether it's ranked, tournaments, player matches. These would be the two most common teams in the game bar none because they were already becoming that before the release of Lab Coat. So again, I understand the impact she had on the game on her launch. She definitely needed to be toned down and she might even still need to be toned down. But I think people are like getting tunnel vision on Lab Coat. And I'm not saying that she doesn't need to be nerfed, okay? I, I want that, I, I cannot stress that enough. I wanna make that abundantly clear. I'm not saying that Lab Coat does not need to be nerfed or that she's fine as she is because this character also does as much as she enables other team compositions she does smoke some other team compositions because she's one of those characters who completely renders a character like piccolo very difficult to, to use or like kid boo or like base vegeta right these are characters that struggle a lot if lab coat is anywhere on your team or on screen because she kind of just shuts them down uh, in a lot of ways or even, even a character like bardock as well right but the other point that i want to make is that lab coat herself is no more of an issue than vegito is now again I understand I have my biases. Everybody knows I'm a well-known Vegito hater. I've hated this character since day one. I've been very, very vocal on my opinion of this character. But he has the same problem that Lab Coat has where both as a point character or as a support character, they are very, very strong. And damn near everybody who plays Vegito is playing him with another fusion, whether it's Blue Gogeta or Red Gogeta, right? Um, and he has what most people would probably say, it's debatable, but most people would say he has the strongest assist in the game but also being one of the strongest like points. You know what I'm saying? When he's on the field, he does a ton of damage. He builds a lot of bar. 
Uh, he synergizes really well with the other characters who do the same things, right? So that's why you see these characters line up so well together because both of their assists lend to each other very, very well. With the addition of the special tagging mechanic, they utilize it better than any of the characters in the entire game. And that's just one more reason why you would see more and more people play those double or triple fusion teams because not only are they the best characters in the game, but they also synergize the most with each other. Right? Since Lab Coat came onto the scene, it enabled a lot of players to not have to succumb to the pure fusion meta and actually run all these different characters. So even though I anticipate her to be nerfed, right, I just hope people understand that Vegito needs to be toned down, uh, in my opinion, just as much as she does, and that he's just as big of a problem. I think there's just like such a big focus and such a big emphasis on her that Vegito's kind of getting overlooked to the point where people are like, oh, Vegito doesn't need to be toned down that much or whatever, whatever. And I will say that the only thing I, or the biggest thing that you could do I think still makes the character strong, still makes him fun for people to enjoy, because I don't want to see him gutted, right? I don't want to see any character that's currently on the roster gutted, but I do think that if you change the assist, right? If you tone down this, that drastically changes the character in a way that still makes him strong, still makes him viable, still makes him fun for the people who really enjoy him, but doesn't make him the king of the game in both support and on the floor, where he synergizes super well with all these other characters and like he's got the best defensive assist that you can confirm off of from full screen, et cetera, et cetera. You, you feel where I'm coming from? I just feel like uh, there's been a bit of an oversight. Now I understand with the with the Gogetas, right? Blue Gogeta and Red Gogeta, obviously with the right supports, which 21 is also one of those supports. Uh, Vegito is also obviously one of those supports. Uh, they become very, very strong. You can make the argument that Blue Gogeta is the best point character in the game, especially with all the mix-ups that he gets, right? It's funny how he went from being Kind of a low tier character to one of the best characters in the game but i would be perfectly content with both gogetas getting a slap on the wrist seeing a decent uh, uh nerf to the vegito a assist and then you tone down lab coat in any number of ways i mean she's got so many strong tools right now it's really a toss up on what you want to do with her um but it is what it is i don't want to see any of those four characters get it but i think vegito and, and lab coat need to be hit the hardest gogetas can get a slap on the wrist and then for the most part you just bring some of the lower characters up like the trunks like yamcha uh those are probably two because like super saiyan vegeta right um, but other than that, when, you, when we look around the roster, I feel like the majority of other characters are pretty good right now. Obviously, I made a list, uh, a tier list of characters who I think need to be buffed, nerfed, mostly stay the same. Eventually, that, that conversation, that discussion, that tier list that I made with everyone on the Twitch channel will make its way here onto the YouTube channel. And I have some things I need to work out before I can actually throw that up here. But um, there are a lot of characters in the game that are really, really good. I think Roshi is okay. A base Goku is okay. Tien is really strong. Yamcha sucks. Krillin is really strong. Super Saiyan Goku, I think, is strong. Is Frieza is strong on point. Kid Buu is... He's mid tier, but he's okay. Ginyu's strong. Nappa's strong. 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 Very, very strong. Um, mm, he could use some help. Strong. 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 Help. Help. Strong. Very strong. Very strong. He's okay. Uh, he's very strong. He's stronger than people think. You know what I'm saying? I think the majority of the roster is very viable right now. And I want to continue to see that be the case, even with Lab Coat 21, even with Vegito, even though I may not like him, I just think that's the healthiest part. Part or the most the healthiest thing you can do for the game is to keep even every character uh still viable to some degree and still fun for players to enjoy those characters to well, play um yeah man, i, I kind of touched on some other things i didn't really expect to get into with this video just because when i start to talking about all these things i have all these different tangents that i go on basically the point of the video and my rationale behind the title is that because lab coat currently exists she actually enables other people to play characters that they like as opposed to just playing the fusions because even though the fusions still exist if lab coat was never in the game or if we had the exact same game right now but without her the fusions just run rampant and if you super super nerf lab coat but just barely touch the fusions then they just take over again and then people will realize oh like as much as we hate a lab coat things are kind of worse off now uh because now it's just everybody running double or triple fusions and I don't think that's the world that we want to live in. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying the fusions can't even be among the best characters in the game or can't be top tier. And I'm not trying to make the argument that they're worse than Lab Coat is or that they need more nerfs than Lab Coat does. I just, I just, I, I've seen so many strong opinions about Lab Coat lately that I just want to throw something out there, just some food for thought that I don't think everyone has considered or thought about before. And I'm sure a lot of people will disagree with this. Um, and that's fine. And if you do, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you guys and we can have a discussion and actually engage if you want to be civil about it, right? Because, um, it's just a video game at the end of the day. No need, no need to actually go at each other's throats. But um, I do think that she enabled a lot of different team compositions and more vi variety and diversity than what we were getting right before she released because we were starting to see more and more people pick up the fusions and the fusions are still prevalent, even with her there. And then, and that's that's my point. If if you if you gut lab coat, but don't do something about the fusions as well, we're, we're just all fighting Gogeta and Vegito nonstop all day, every day. And it's already like that as it is in some cases, but even more so without her. So, you know, uh, I'm really interested in seeing what the balance patch holds for us. This is, like I said, just some food for thought I wanted to throw out there. But you guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Hit this video with a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already so you can stay tuned for all this content that I bring you. With all that being said, this is pretty much off today. Remember, 
Nothing can happen until you swing the bat. Later.